Welcome everyone. Welcome to my my demo. Today we're going to talk about simplifying shapes in a busy scene. And uh, my name is Jackie Doyle, and I uh, I work for Stellar Creative Lab. I'm based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, if you want to know my social medias, I've posted them in the lecture comms channel. If there's any questions as we're going, I don't mind being asked. Uh, I'll really try to have some time at the end for questions and more exploration, but um, yeah. So simplifying shapes in a busy scene. So the image I brought you today is, uh, well, there's two images, but first we're going to start with this one. And just take a look. We're just going to take it all in and notice all the contrasting elements of the picture. And I'm, I'm sure like some of you already kind of know about like simplification and grouping terms like that. And like a lot of you are practiced at it, but for the purpose of the demo, we will like go over that kind of stuff a bit just to help out people. Yeah. So when I see this picture that I took this morning, it's uh it's from my backyard. There are some like elements that like stand out. Like of course you see a lot of the lighting and we see some color differences. And then we see the objects and how they like seem to be a bit different from each other. So some are more like like the pots are more like cylindrical. And the, the grass is a bit like more of like a plane. And then they have the, the fence behind them that's like a bit flatter. And then you have like some of the like plants that are sticking out of the pots. They're a bit like linear. So we could start like already thinking about like kind of like what breaks those bigger shapes down. And then on top of that, if we look at the lighting information, those create shapes as well. However, it's it can be very easy to like be bogged down by like a lot of the detail. Like I can see here, I'm just gonna highlight. There's like a lot of information that could be a lot if we try to like replicate every single detail and like there's a lot of like little details inside the the plants themselves there's all that grass like each blade we can see in this photo like it could be difficult to like want to try to like get into that detail right away and i think um part of our um, challenge would be to make sure that we're not thinking too much in terms of the smaller detail. We want to think a more larger, uh, we want to think in a larger frame of mind so we don't become too, too bogged down. So there's some tools we can use to like simplify this and it usually goes towards like design language and depending on like the kind of picture you want to make we can push for further uh, shape and design further abstraction if we want to it depends on like your end goal i think for today we'll try to keep it relatively broad just so that you know later on you could potentially render it out further like paint more detail so I think some design tools that I like to use personally, I will show. I will write down for you. So a good one, a very good one, big, medium, small. As a concept, 
this means that like we want to notice like what shapes are the largest, what shapes are kind of like medium sized, and then like what shapes are the smallest. And in our head, we can decide kind of like what those like things are. So we can start out pretty big and then make sure we don't go too small so that we don't like get too uh, crazy about the small details yet. So let's see that. So yeah, we see like the literal object representation, which we were talking about before, like, oh, that's like a potted plant. That's the fence. But alternatively, we can also see like, this is one large shape. This is like another shape that might be more medium. Then we see this, which is relatively like smaller to that larger shape. And then within this shape, you have these various shapes. Like you can basically abstract it in your mind that there are like smaller things you can, or like groupings you can put them into. And that'll help you organize your mind a bit better. And also it will help create like, like help you consider the, the a nice variety and that'll help you make it a little bit more natural. And we can further see like, okay, maybe that's like a slightly smaller detail. And then within these shapes, you get smaller ones. So that's big, medium, small. Does that make sense so far? Okay, cool. Another good concept I like to think about is looking for like lines and it could be like diagonals. It can be like linear, like curve linear, like so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I understand correctly, you're asking like, how do lines apply to this image? Yes. Yeah, I think I understand. So like, yeah, lines also help create like contrast and yet images will inherently have like lines as well. Um, I'd be careful though, like to, to start like with like lines first, you might get into a, like there's no hard fast rules, but for me, I like to think more in like the broad shape and then kind of apply like what are the lines after that, which are like straights versus curves and like concave versus convex kind of stuff. So let's explore what's in here. So we have some lines, like you could be like the boundary between the fence and the grass. So that's one, which like helps us with perspective. And we have like these lines which like form the shapes. We have these interesting lines and they can also form shapes. And one thing, like we know we see these lines in here, but I'd be careful to like think too much of them as like individual lines. I think for this picture, I would approach it like more like this is the larger shape. Then we're going to go into like, like smaller triangular shapes to like carve it out. And then we can use the principle of big, medium, small to create like a nice effect. And uh, that way you don't have to like think so much like in linear terms, but after the fact, I would like to, sometimes go over to like bring some of the lines out. So you're like, okay. It really depends like stylistically as well. If you're like, you want it to be more representational of like the photo or if you want to like stick to broader shapes. And yeah, we will try to paint this out 
So we will we will do like a small demo of I think it would be good to show like how to break this kind of shape down. And then so that's uh straights versus curves. I guess like for for like the contrasting straights versus curves, you can notice like like in figure drawing, it's a bit more obvious where like there are forces, but for the purposes of painting, I just like to think of it like where they could exist. So if this is like the shape of a curve, then it will offset that line. And that way you've like kept it distinct from the background. So as you paint, you'll probably like find these like moments where you can see where there's like a line you can contrast with the curve and then make sure you don't have any tangents as well. So, yeah. So not only do we apply that kind of thing to to the object, we apply it also to like shadows. So maybe like if you want to avoid like this awkward tangent, we can like bring the curve here and then have this like come straight here. You like you can move elements around if you're like, no, I don't like it. Let's bring it. Or you could even like bring the shadow over a little bit. I wouldn't like like me personally, if I wanna like move something around, I think it's fine. If it reads better. Yeah, ultimately our goal is to like in this kind of way of thinking is to like create a something that will read well and will not be confusing to look at. So yeah, we can find a few more spots for that. Like here, it's nice because they, they offset each other pretty well. I think this is why I picked this picture. Does this make sense so far for everyone? I'm going to assume yes, if no one speaks up yet. <laughs> Okay, I like to be affirmed, thank you. So then um, last thing I like to consider as I, as I go is the, or like one of the last things is the variety in spacing and rhythm. So as I was doing the big, medium, small, you might have noticed I was like, not trying to like make it symmetrical. Like we don't, this doesn't feel natural when you just like make it very samey unless that's, you know, you're specifically doing that for a project or style. But if we want like a little bit more natural, you'll notice that in nature, it kind of does it for you sometimes. So you see like, oh, that's cool. There's like maybe this shape. So that's like our larger shape here. And then we can go in for like smaller shapes and try not to like be symmetrical. And at this point you can be a bit more playful, which is fun. You can design it a bit more. So maybe we got something like, I don't know, these shapes going. And you just play with that. Like, like it's, it's just fun time. And, uh, I think earlier I was talking about like concave and convex. So this is actually like a cool like thing to consider. It's like not only can you go like outward with your your curve from the, the object, you can go inward. So this can like give you more of a tool set. You can even try like contrasting concave and convex and this kind of shape is really good for like trees and when you combine it with like like uh straights as well you get a really nice effect it's still like a curve but like it's just like kind of two kinds of curves and depending on like if it's negative or positive space like you can interpret it differently so maybe instead of considering oh this is the object maybe i'll just think more like this is the negative space going in. 
so you can get some some variety of shape that way as well without um, being too bogged down. So this is all like considering like more negative kind of thinking, <laughs> negative space thinking. And then we get like, this is more positive space thinking. So you can like play with those kinds of like things. And like that just gives you a nice tool set that you can use. And even if you wanted to try something like this, you'd be like, what, what would happen if I only use straight lines? It also gives like an interesting effect because you also create these kind of almost curved shapes. So that way you can like decide what kind of like style you can apply to the picture, but still have like a nice uh, naturalistic feel if you like use other principles like big, medium, small, and uh, and uh, variety in your rhythm and shapes. So you're like, okay, I did my linear thing, and then you can go in like with like a curve going in, and then like a curve going out or something. Like, fun to try. How's that so far? Yeah, like this. This is where it gets really playful in your your thought process, where you can like have control over your your scene, and then. If you start broad, that way you can like kind of hone in. Like, if this is my focal point, like I want this to be like the most prominent, I might just like make this very simple, and then this foreground element will have like maybe more complex shapes in it. And that way, you can decide where you want detail, which is fun. And then let's see if I missed any other kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, those are kind of like the main things I use. And then if your photo or your reference or what you're looking at has a lot of shadows, you use those to your effect as well, which is cool. In this kind of photo, I like it because it's like I can play with this shape. I can play however I want with this shapes up here. Do whatever I want. Uh, I can change it if I need to, to fit in with these shapes. So instead of like, oh no, I'm tangent, I can just like decide I want like to come across like that or something for the shadow. Maybe I'll make it stop there. Or maybe I want it to point more to the focal point that way. So now you're also going to use that for your compositional tool. So you're like, okay, this comes that way which is nice so we can decide like we're gonna go in <laughs> hard we're gonna point downwards so that we get right in there and these are gonna like like you can get so broad as to decide like i don't care about these shapes when i paint i'm gonna do it like that because <laughs> you're crazy like that which is fun and then you can like go in a little bit if you're like oh, okay I'll just like when I do my shapes I'll do that so then once you have like those shapes in place I think it's more like a stylistic consideration for how much detail you want to add and how much like lighting information you want because you can break it down into further shapes you're like okay here's my like yeah you know, this is the light and this is like my highlight where it goes there Here's like my shadow. It's like goes there. Maybe I wanted this shape to be all in shadow. So like you can go like deeper. And then I think at any point if you want to, like if you keep it pretty simple at the start, you can decide, you know what? I don't like how this looks like in the photo. Once again, we we are masters. Maybe I want this to like connect and I'll make this all in shadow. You can decide that. You can be like, this shape is all one big shape, and this will all be in shadow. And it, it will be helpful if you like have some understanding of like light theory and color theory. But that way you can be like, okay, this is how I want to do it. I'm going to make sure this is all 
simple. So like here too, like you can be like, you can either have this like little thing, which I kind of like, so we'll keep it maybe. All this can be like a shadow. Let's see if we can simplify it a little. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of light there, right? Just so you can have some form information. So then, yeah, it's like so much um, play. And then at the end of the day, you can be like, let's just make sure our composition is always pointing there. So then maybe your shadow and your grass like meet there. And if you're, there's like a tangent there or something, you can like fluff up the grass a little with like smaller shapes. So I think that's that's why I picked this photo. I think it shows like a decent enough um, way of approaching. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Deciding on, okay. I think we already talked about like the focal point, like you can add more detail and bring attention to it. Uh, big, medium, small, yep. So let's take a look at this other photo because this one's really detailed, which is fun. And uh, this is a photo I took like when I was like on one of the Gulf Islands off the coast of BC. So there's a lot of like plant life. So once again, with our tools, we'll take a look. Let's write down variety in spacing and I don't know, spell that rhythm. And then, yeah. We got those tools with us. We're going to see what we can do for this bad boy. And this is all before we started painting. Like, I think, like, you don't have to do this for every, like, piece, like, going in and, like, studying it. But sometimes it's, like, just a good exercise to like explore it without like getting too hard into like the painting phase where like a lot of the labor is just like laying down the paint kind of thing. So for this one, I'm going to decide what I like the most about this picture. And I think it is probably this large tree, like this long tree. And I think I want to make it the start of the show. So how do we do that? Well, if I see a tree like this, and it's kind of like, eh, it's like a similar size to like these trees, I will just make it bigger. Cause like that way you can have more importance to it just to have some contrast. So I'm going to make this a star. Eh. Maybe I'll make it very straight to start. We're like, yeah, <laughs> some curve because the branches go off and they swoop down. So fun. And then you're like, you could do like some additional like little like considerations of like, okay, there's like this weird knob. So like maybe I'll <laughs> like do that. Yeah. You make it like your main, your main boy. And then we get, or your main subject. And you have like this tree in the background that like I think it's intersecting like with the other tree. It's probably like maybe leaning on it, but I think compositionally, I like to think this tree is just standing up. So for this tree in the background, I would consider like making it like very carefully if you want to keep it. Making it smaller. I'll try to use a different color, it's not very bright. There you go. <laughs> That's a nice color. So yeah, we haven't really gotten into like color theory or light, but now we're just seeing how these shapes can like work for us. Kind of like that, it just goes right down. So the reason why I moved it over is just to give a bit of room for the, the negative space. Right here. Just so we have a nice like triangle. And then we have like this shape. We have like a small one up there. And then here. Yeah, sure. 
that's what I've decided. The next thing I'm going to look out for is like we have this nice like foreground element. And uh, because it's close to camera, if something's closer, I don't mind trying to like give it a little bit more detail just to show it's like detail receding into the background. In general, I kind of, if it's really far, it'll be way more like simple and abstract than if it's like forward. And that way you keep some of the natural feeling of the picture. So yeah, maybe this one, because it's like contrasting the huge tree, we can start with like a nice curve. And in general, like unless you're doing a stylistic thing to like be symmetrical, I would consider not having your curves like symmetrical. What I mean, I mean by that is like, if you have like just like a very symmetrical curve, it's very balanced, and it doesn't really show like a like a literal energy of like where it's going. Like this could be handy for like architecture. Sometimes they'll have like that kind of thing, which is like good for a building because it's supposed to be like stable and pretty square. But because life is like dynamic and it has movement, we can apply like a force to it so that it like has a asymmetry. And that way you have like a nice curve to work with. So even this is a little little tame. Let's let's try to like get her. We're just starting out with the big curve just so we can see where that is. I think also I'll try to like point it a bit more to the focal, which is like just coming up and down this this shape. You might decide to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that happens a lot, like, as I'm painting. Yeah, as I'm painting sometimes, I'm like, wait, we could go further. <laughs> and that that's how you, like, just get more design. A little too tame, let's. Let's go wild. Yeah, it's it this this what makes it fun. Yeah, wild. Yeah. Yeah, you might notice like like in your version of this, maybe you have like some different like compositional ideas and that's what makes it fun. So like everyone can look at the same photo, but you might have like a different way you want to like interpret the the subject, which is fun. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe maybe I need it like in two shapes. So I like that it does that, but like I'm a little bit worried about like this kind of corner. I think we can fix it by just using that thing in the back to like bring it in a little bit. Y'all probably have a better solution, but That'll do for now. Maybe these come in a bit. So yeah, we're subdividing this a bit because it is close to the camera. Personally, I like to work with things that are sometimes close, but I try not to paint like in the edges, like because then you're like looking towards the edge, which isn't as fun. So yeah, maybe it's like that, those kinds of shapes. And then we have like the background, so the background has like so much going on. You could get lost in the pixels. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna think, okay, what could be the simplest thing? Let's see. There's like some shapes here. I would actually try to like manipulate these shapes to like point once more to the this area. So I think I would try to just block in my own sky. <laughs> this this can be fun. So or a challenge, but that's fun too. Maybe it, yeah, it like leads you down there. And then maybe if you want to like show a bit more of the foliage, like if you keep this like this could be the light let's put let's put l there maybe we'll consider like the dark being like a little bit 
more uh so you can have some subdivision in the dark but just like i wouldn't pick a color that's very like strong so i think this shape's cool like this this seems to be coming out a bit so we can we can work with her so yeah it, it, it is a complicated like kind of image for this one which is why i chose this one for the second case it's a little bit more um problem solving so uh let's what time are we at okay 12 30. is there anything specific you guys were wondering about that i've missed oh good yeah i think it some people i think like some people some of y'all like are intuitively doing it which is really cool I, i'm not sure like how much you guys are thinking about it, but I, I'm thinking about it, like, too much. <laughs> and then, like, what's weird is, like, sometimes I'll forget to, like, think broadly because, like, my origin was, like, kind of more, like, detailed-oriented where I wanted to, like, really get into, like, material study, which I did for, like, a long time in production design. And uh, the past couple of years have been, like, a journey of um, trying to figure out, like, literal design, which is kind of, like, what animation and some video games or like almost every every media has like some degree of it and then like at this point you can choose like you want to subdivide the shapes a bit more or if you want to go a little bit more natural and at this point we haven't even gotten into like like detailing right so i think this is a good place at least for me uh, i think maybe then i'll jump into the heavy paint and see like how we can use heavy paint as a tool for shapes as well, because heavy paint inherently has like really good, uh, I think, fun tools, because <laughs> it's kind of wild. So we like it that way. We got heavy paint open. Yeah. 